So hello and welcome to the second episode of the Board Hat Tavern podcast, a podcast all about Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. I'm your host, Daz. I'm joined today by the co-hosts of the podcast, Sandy and Novich. So on the show today, we've got a good one for you. Lots and lots of news to cover. We've got some dev notes that got released about midway through the week, kind of like a tailing response to the Assault Meliodas scandal that happened a couple of weeks, or I guess last week. We're going to go over the patch notes, some of which just kind of updated literally minutes ago, but we also got some on Sunday night as well. So we're going to be going over that. The new characters that come are coming out on the banner tomorrow, Red Jericho, Red Fat King, Green Roxy, Red Shin, we're going to be talking about all of them, potentially uses for them or potentially non-uses for things like Red Fat King. And uh, we're going to cap the show off with Sandy's free-to-play tips for Camilla because everyone's got a shiny new Camilla, uh, hopefully, if you've been doing the events and everything from last week. So let's see if we have some ideas from Sandy on how to use them. But I've got to say, last week we did our first show and we had some amazing community response. We posted up on Reddit, got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback, a lot of constructive criticism. I feel like we haven't got any trolls coming out yet, which is great. You, you, I guess you know you've made it when the trolls come out, so we haven't made it quite yet. But still, we had like many hundreds of viewers, many hundreds of listeners. And uh, considering it's our first show, I was I was pretty impressed with that. How about you guys? Yeah, no, definitely. I, I was, was definitely a fun experience and uh, looking forward to today's show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm super, super excited. I mean, you know, nothing but good things from the community. Um so I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> so hopefully we keep this going. Yeah. And, and like always give us your feedback. We love to hear from it. We've read like literally everything that was posted wherever we posted stuff. So give us those comments. Like let us know if you like segments. Let us know if you don't like segments. We're testing a lot of stuff out, especially since we're just getting started on the podcast, testing on new segments, seeing how it goes. So keep that feedback up. Thank you so much for all your support, everybody. So Sandy, <laughs> last week, you were killing it on Guild Boss. You put out a whole bunch of videos. You got a lot of people's scores up. I want to know what you're doing this week because it's an off week for Guild Boss, right? Now that we've qualified for Guild Wars, you can, we're, we're taking the week off as a guild. What have you been doing this week? I've just been uh, remodeling. If you've seen my latest uh, video, my tavern's under new management. I'm just, uh, you know, getting everybody in check and, you know, get your uniforms on. <laughs> well, so. yeah i popped in and i noticed there's a lot of shirtless males <laughs> which i guess is part of the the remodeling process i heard something about chippendales is that, is that the theme you're going for uh that's my theme yes as of right now and um yeah if you guys are my friends uh just come visit the tavern you can check out all the uh shirtless men <laughs> <laughs> if that's your thing no but how about you, Novich? What have you been up to this week? You've been farming gold with the new SP dungeon changes now that we had like a half stamina weekend. It was, are you, are you like Scrooge McDuck swimming through all the gold that you've been piling up? Yeah, definitely. You know, that was a great event right before we have to uh, build our teams for Guild Wars. So using that gold to, for armor and um, unit upgrading is uh, definitely helpful. So I'm looking forward for that, that event to come by again. Um, definitely over the weekend, it was just nonstop farming. <laughs> I feel like the problem of income, like gold income in the game has been solved now with the Fort Solgris changes. Cause every two weeks you can farm, farm literally like hundreds of millions of gold. I think there was some, you do, I think it might've been Seton was showing that there's actually a gold limit, which I don't, not sure if anyone's ever hit that before, but you can only get to a billion gold. I feel like Netmarble might have to increase that now that we've got this new farming, uh, location for gold in the SP dungeon. So getting into the show, we're going to look at the dev notes that I mentioned before midweek. This is just kind of capping off the whole assault Meliodas bit that happened. If you were living in that box and you didn't hear anything about assault Meliodas, essentially assault Meliodas was supposed to drop this week, but because of community outcry, it got canned and we had a response from the community or sorry, from the, from Netmarble saying, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're, we're really sorry about that we're going to be being a little bit better and listening to the community from here on out. And they put a little bit of an addendum to that. And they said, okay, what we're going to start doing is we're going to space things out. We're only going to release 
new banners every two weeks. And we kind of got that feel after having our first week ever, I think, since Global launched without a banner. Uh, so we're getting in the new banner this week. It's got a lot of characters on it, though. So my question to Sandy and Novich, I guess, to start this off is, if we're getting banners every other week, but we're still getting twice as many characters on each banner, is that a good thing? Bad thing? What do you guys think? Let's go to Sandy first. Sandy, what do you think? I mean, they're, they said they're going to slow it down, right? Um, but I still feel as if Netmarble is trying to catch up. They're, I mean, they're releasing four new units. Um, so for me, I'm like, yeah, every two weeks, but you're releasing new units. So for master collectors out there, are they going to pull, you know, um, are they, they're trying to catch up to Japan? Maybe, you know, I might be wrong. Um, but they're just trying to cut their production cost, you know, um, just trying to catch up with JP. So to me as free to play, I'm like, these are new units. Am I going to pass on them? Most likely I will, because again, I'm saving for the one. That's coming soon, um, but can't speak for everybody. Do you have the same opinion, Novich, or do you have something different? Uh, something different, actually. Um, it's nice to have a, uh, a bye week, you know, and then kind of making your decision on what you're going to do. Um, I mean, the the banner, I mean, we're going to get into it in details, but the the loyalty point system, I mean, if the units are, are, are pretty decent, it'd be kind of, it's kind of good that you at least get halfway mark and you, you get one of them. That that and it's not a it's not a unit that you're not going to use, um, but yeah, I, I mean this this banner uh, I'm actually looking forward to it. It's it's not a one that I mean I'm going to throw a bunch of gems at it. Maybe a couple pulls and kind of see where I get. Maybe to the first loyalty, and kind of and kind of see where, how that goes. Um, I mean you know down the road. I mean when the Escanor banner comes out, the units on there. You know if you don't pull him, but you pull a quality unit. that's you know, uh, that'll be kind of nice as well. Um, yeah. Well, one thing that that Neb Marble mentioned in the in these dev notes too is that they're going to start trying to match the off banner units to more closely mimic what JP's been getting. I know a lot of people were disappointed, myself included, on the Archangels banner with Sariel and Tarmiel that we just got recently. There was no Lidosio. Like I. Purpose, I'm sure a lot of people purposely skipped the Lidosiel banner because they knew, you know, I'll just wait it out until the Archangels come out and on that banner should be Lidosiel too, but he wasn't. But a little present surprise and a little bit of a peek, sneak peek into something we're going to be talking about later in the show. Lidosiel is actually on this next banner, along with Green Gother too, the one that was coming out tomorrow. So what I'm I'm seeing this as a, as a good thing, a good sign. Hopefully it's not just like, we better like give them a good banner because they've been really, really on our case. You know, like the Netmarble execs are a little like, let's give them like a, a good one just quickly. Um, a lot of people are out making a bit of an outcry about it, but I, th- I think it's actually a good thing putting twice as many featured units on banners half as often because then like you're presumably going to be getting less trashy units on those banners because we all know we've we've seen those banners where like you'll have the one featured unit that everyone wants and just nothing else you know your your green jerichos and like you know r- r- like m- red merlins of the world right that everyone's probably got 6-6 six, six by now if you've been playing for the game the game for a long time so my point is, is that I think it's a lot easier still to get those characters that you want, and you can pick and choose banners. You don't have to pull on all of them. Now, you don't have to pull every week, too, if you're a whale, even, too. You can just be like, hey, well, I'll pull every other week. I'll probably have to spend less gems to get all those new characters, you know, high alt level, or just even get one copy if that's what you're looking for, right? So I, I personally think it's a, it's a great change, and I hope we keep seeing this going forward. Um, but one other thing, one of the biggest drops that they talked about in these dev notes was that the one Escanor, we actually have a date for the one Escanor. Um, Next week, we've got this homecoming event, which is presumably like the festival event starting. And we're going to get 110 draw tickets gifted. And then the week after that, on February the 15th, we're going to be getting Big Daddy Blue Escanor. Now, I, I don't actually know a ton about Blue Escanor other than the fact that I want him. And it's like an irrational want. And I feel like a lot of people are kind of in that boat too. They're like, oh, he's coming. I, I don't know why I want it, but I want that guy, right? So, I, no, but I got to ask you, is I know you know a little bit more about Blue Escanor than I do. Like, why do I want him so badly? Like, is this an unfounded love or is there actually a reason that I want him here? No, he's, he's definitely a fun unit. I think everyone that's looking forward to him or even people that were unsure or, you know, 
just starting the game or only been in the game for a little bit. He's definitely a, a unit that is top tier. You use him in PvE, PvP. Um, he could use him as your character running around, which I'm sure a, a lot of us will probably have him in your knighthoods or in the PvP zones. Um, you know, it'll look like a, a, a gold's gym <laughs> everywhere. Um, but yeah, no, he's he's a he's a blue unit. So uh, I've been looking forward to a very strong unit for hell, hell demons for the red demon. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's other great units to use in that that battle. But a lot of us have already have a set made for your green or red Escanor. So you could just throw it on to to the one, and uh, it'll definitely uh, shine for you. I mean. I mean, he's used in PvP. You could you could pair him with like Green Galther, who <laughs> Green Galther is almost paired with everyone. <laughs> so um, that's very helpful. And you know, with Death, Death Pierce as a sub um, on the sub slot, you're able to you know take advantage of that. Um, but definitely fun in PvP, fun in PvE. Um, you know, just a unit that you'll have fun with. And anyone that invests in Serial, you know, if you're a little bummed out because you pulled and you don't have enough gems for the one. You know, throw throw him as a sub unit or uh, association on the one, and you know, take advantage of his grace. Make make the one that much stronger, and um, you know. But either way, you know, get him one out of six. He's still going to be a great unit for you guys. He hits really hard. Is this the new blue meta coming? Because I imagine a lot of those squishy red units are going to be fearing the release of red es or blue Escanor. And yeah, yeah, that's definitely the, the fun part when they release new units, especially like the, the ones that we're going to cover. And uh, I'm looking forward to Sandy's uh, opinion on on the new units um, because you get different combinations and you run into, uh, I mean, it's kind of boring if it's the same team that you're fighting and it's the same team that you're using at time again. But I mean, it, it's fun to throw different sets together and kind of just have fun with it, you know? Sandy, are you going to be saved for the one as well? I feel like everyone is at this point, but are you? How many rotations oh, yeah. are you going to do? Let me let me let me put it that way. Are you going to just going to do like nine hundred? You gonna you've been saving for a while. What's your what was your what's your plan here? Well, I've been saving for a while. I think I'm at a thousand gems right now. Um, I have some Google Play points that I haven't ca cashed in, so I I might be aiming for a six out of six. Really want to take him to PvP so he can just one shot people. Um, but main reason, I just want him because he just looks yoked uh, in his wife beater and, you know, close as shirtless as I can get him, right? <laughs> yeah, to add to the Chippendales Tavern. Oh, yeah. I'm just praying I get like a one or a two six on. Oh, I mean, I'll get the one six because I, I skipped the King banner. And I think a lot of people did as well in preparation for not only the Archangels, but for the one Escorn and Assault Meliodas. So I'm kind of in that boat. I'm sitting around maybe 550, 600 gems. I'm planning on having 900 around when he pops. Been like, you know, teasing with like maybe buying some costumes for other characters, like seeing like what I can afford, right? Like pulling out the calculator and be like, okay, 900 minus 30 minus this, you know, just to make sure I've got enough for him when he launches. Well, that's going to be hella exciting, but we also have uh, some JP dev notes that dropped last week as well. And even though we don't cover JP, it's always good to like get that foresight because a lot of the stuff that, could, well, I mean, everything pretty much that comes on JP is going to come to global eventually. And some stuff sooner rather than later with these time frames crunching in and us getting closer and closer to that. I don't know what you want to call it, the point zero or like the, the merge point. But um, the one big thing that came out of that, let's get the little thing out of the way first. Season three reverse stages was announced for JP. It, I don't think they gave a date. Uh, a lot of this is pretty far out. Their dev notes, even for like the next thing I'm talking about, are saying like many months down the road. They said like first half they're expecting to bring it out, which means probably the very end of the first half, sometime during the summer. Um, but season three reverse stages, that's pretty cool, getting some extra content in there. But the uh, the big piece of news is that they're going to be expanding the traditional Guild Wars to encompass everybody, which is amazing because... There's nothing worse than having content that's locked to an exclusive set of people. So what they're going to be doing is, they're, first off, they're going to be expanding the traditional Guild Wars from top 32 to more guilds. They mentioned top 40, and then presumably more and more from as uh, time goes on. But they're also going to be having ungeared Guild Wars, which will be available to everybody. Um, this is something where all players should have access if you're in a knighthood. The rule set, they say, is going to be simplified slightly, which I guess makes sense. Um, given that you know a lot of people that are just newly in a knighthood might not have maybe nearly as many 
te- uh, heroes to to field the te- field team so they might reduce the the roster sizes or something i don't know uh, but also another interesting thing and this is not super clear, but they said that they're going to make it so it doesn't conflict with the current Guild Wars schedule, which makes me believe that we're going to have uh, geared and ungeared that you can participate in if you're in the top 32. So uh, that's, that's a nice change. Uh, I think it's pretty awesome to have this content for everybody. And I'm, I'm assuming Sandy Novaj, you, you, Novaj, you probably think the exact same thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, the first round of Guild Wars, we didn't, we fell short by two, two point or two ranks. Oh, and... two points. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be painful. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, everyone else in the top hundred are probably felt the same way or, you know, and I think um, some people uh, are looking forward to that. I mean, expand the content to everyone else and let them experience it. Um, we're looking forward to our first experience uh, this week with it and uh, thinking that I Sandy's probably going to do some videos on it so she could kind of give everyone a, a view of how what, what's to come down the road. That's actually a really good point too with like the people being disappointed about not making it. And to the point where like last time when we didn't make it, we were on the cusp. We, we had people that were distraught enough that they decided to leave the guild for, you know, guilds that they thought would have a better shot of making top 32 in the next rotation. And I've been, I've been in the official discord because I do a lot of the recruiting for our guild. And I, I saw like a lot of guilds being like, you know, like our guild's breaking up. We want to merge players leaving, looking for like guild wars eligible teams. Like it's, it's really sad when you see guilds that potentially, you know, have form these friendships and communities break up over the fact that some content isn't available to all. And that's, that's really sad. And um, one thing we've always promoted in our discord is like a positive, you know, welcoming environment. And I feel like this kind of breeds almost distrust and backstabbing behavior, right? Um, not saying that anyone in, in, in our discord was doing that, but like you see, you see people leaving and, and like anytime you get leaving in drama, it just, it just breeds kind of like an unpleasant environment. And I think that this change can fix that a lot so it can make the community as a whole healthier and this is probably just an unintentional change on that more marbles part but a beneficial one either way hey what do you think about that sandy i uh, i really like the including everybody i mean i can speak for myself seeing that little knighthood button just change on your screen i mean i giggled over it (laughs) so i definitely want to show you know the other guilds in the top 100 or just people who are curious of what the interface may look like um, and how to set up your teams and such i I think just giving them a little feel of it um, so then when it does open up you know hopefully we can get that update same as jp that they don't go into it blind because I, I was over here struggling, like, oh, I gotta go, you know, do my CC today. Um, I gotta register my team tomorrow. So just something for everyone to look forward to. That's an amazing point too. Like, there's not a lot of YouTube content on Guild Wars because not only is it exclusive. I mean, a lot of the the major YouTubers you see out there, they are participating in Guild Wars. But I'm sure the guild's probably like, well, you can't show them too much, uh, unless you're like releasing these videos after. The, the Guild War battle is completed because you're going to give insider information, you know? Um, but yeah, like it, it, you just feel like you want to make sure this stuff is like more open and accessible. And I think it's great that you're going to be doing these videos. And personally, like, you know, if the other guild wants to look at our strats and stuff, like whatever, it's just for fun anyways, right? I think it's beneficial for the community as a whole to get this kind of information and be able to see and get exposed to it. It feels like it's really behind like a closed locked door in a lot of ways. And even us like trying to uh, do research and our due diligence on this, it's really hard to find information on how uh, Guild Wars operates. I mean, we've, we've done some great research. I feel like I haven't had to research stuff this hard since like the internet's been around, right? I feel like I had to go to like the library to find out stuff on Guild Wars. Like it was that difficult, right? Like going through the Dewey Decimal System, trying to figure out what number to go to in the library books. I mean, any, any of our younger viewers will have no idea what I'm talking about, but at least um, anyone who's a little bit older will understand those ones. But yeah, no, I think it's I think it's a great change too. So moving on to uh, no Novich, you got something to say? Yeah, no. Uh, just on that point, it's it's. Uh, I think the first round, you know, and on global, a lot of people probably didn't know um, how to properly set up your teams and whatnot, so they probably didn't want to share too much. 
just hoping that there's there's probably more content down the road. As you say, I agree with you. It's all it's all fun. I mean, just like how there's there's a, a lot of information on knighthood bosses, and you know, Sandy's one of them. You know, just sharing sharing that information so you know everyone could you know have fun with that. And so uh, I I look forward if Sandy's going to put out some content and kind of put things together. She does a great job, and you know, a lot of the other. Um, uh, guildmates and people in the alliance in our discord are, are appreciative of that um so definitely definitely can't wait for those videos sandy so going on to i guess the big news the patch notes so they're just like any well, at least midnight my time monday night during maintenance we had a flurry of stuff in the in official form. So we're just going to go over some of those things. Some of those were released on Sunday night too. They, they've started getting to that schedule of releasing stuff on Sunday night, then also Monday night, just to give you a little bit more details. So we're going to go all over all of that stuff, including the new units. Uh, starting with the first thing that they posted, the Camilla bonus pendants. Turns out, if you want to get three bonus SSR pendants, which is pretty amazing, right? Free pendants. All you have to do is you've got to evolve your Camilla to you are level 60. I didn't see anything about six stars. There. Some people on, on Reddit and stuff were saying, oh, you got a six star, but I didn't see anything about six stars, but you might want to confirm that either way. I'm sure they probably won't check. So then what you do is you equip the Priestess of the Sky costume set, take a picture, screen grab, whatever, and you post it on the official forums in the Camilla event section. Make sure you post in the right section. What they're going to do is they're going to check for the people who posted there and the, you make sure you're logged in with whatever login you use for the game, whether it be like Google or Facebook, whatever your account's linked to, or even just your like Netmarble username and password in the forums. It should say like whatever your, your in-game name is when, you, when you're in the forums too, so you know you've got the right login. Uh, so then you post the picture, then ta-da, you'll get three free pendants in your inbox. Not sure what the time frame is on that, but you'll be then getting them shortly thereafter. So that's pretty cool. Free pendants. Uh, more importantly, though, that was just like a little PSA. Now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. We've got the new banner. We've talked about it briefly, but we're going to go into a bit more detail. We're going to talk about the characters. We're going to be talking about their abilities, where they, where they could be used, where they may not be used, et cetera, et cetera. So the four characters we've got are red, freezing Jericho. There's so many Jerichos, I don't even know if there's like four other red ones at this point, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of Jerichos out there. But anyways, this is the red freeze Jericho that JP got not too long ago on her own, on their own banner, by the way, she was on a separate banner. Um, we were getting red fat King, which is well overdue, but no one really cared anyways. And we've got three Halloween units, Halloween in February, go figure Halloween, Roxy, Halloween, red shin. And even though he's not a feature rate up, a lot of people are probably interested to know that Halloween green Gother is also on this banner. And he's one of the best units in the game, if not the best unit in the game. So I know a lot of people, you know, he's time limited. He's not on any sort of part one, part two tickets, anything like that. A lot of people are going to want to try and pick him up on this banner. And then also we got Lidociel and Red Derriere on this banner too, as well as, you know, Green Fraudrin and a couple others. But this banner is not looking too bad if you're, you know, it's, it's, um, we'll talk about if we think it's a skippable one and we'll get everyone's opinions on that later, but still like in terms of like a tra trash units, there's not many trash units here. Even Blue Zeldris is on this banner. It's a pretty cool one. It's a step up banner, which is awesome too. Nova just talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, so every 10th pull you do, every 10th multi you do, you get a guaranteed Jericho. That's pretty cool. And the first 10th, pull first round first round of step up you do you get a roxy on your 10th multi as well as the jericho on your 20th multi so this is a second lap that you're doing you'll also get a guaranteed shin to go with your guaranteed jericho that you get on that step two red king he's given out for free but not on the step ups he's given it out as part of the hawk event which we're going to be talking about a little bit later too so we're going to go over all the characters we're going to start with red freeze Jericho and Novage is going to take us through the character's abilities and you know, some points about him. Her. Yeah. So, uh, red Jericho, um, she does share the same cosmetics as the other Jerichos, the SSR green one and all the other Jerichos that you were mentioning, which is good, which is nice because again, you know, and, and people that invested early on, cause she was a fun unit for guild boss at one point crit, crit sets with her attack crit sets uh, for those high damage or triple crit. I mean, 
if you pull if you pull for her and you get her you know a, a couple tries i mean she's a, she's a fun unit i wouldn't say she's she's definitely game breaking but uh a unit that you could have fun with i mean uh like daz says she's she's known as the freezing unit uh she does uh her cards her rank one uh first skill is just a, a general attack on the enemy if you if you level it to rank two it actually freezes them and it actually does damage and then after the freeze is removed by a skill ultimate move or when just the turns pass it does a an equal uh damage percentage of uh, remaining hp um so again you know that increases as it goes to rank three um i mean playing with that it just comes to mind you know you do a triple uh, free set team you know <laughs> um and kind of just mess with people because they wouldn't be expecting that you know um but uh yeah sure her other her other moves are basically she does uh detonate damage which uh is damage after a certain amount of turns um uh, it varies from you know rank one 160 to rank two 240 and then finally her rank three does 400 percent uh, which is not bad. Um, again, you know, uh, her, her, her main skill that she's, you, you'll probably have fun with is probably her freezing skill. Um, her, her unique is actually what kind of pushes her a little bit more, uh, uh, for use when you use her skill, um, and she crits, it actually uh, decreases their defense related stats by 40% for two turns. So, you know, just hearing that there's, a, there's an array of different units you could pair her with, you know, uh, from, Death Pierce uh, to uh, Ludosio um, or even Serial, you know, it's it's just a combination of playing around with different things that, you know, that you have, you know, and necessarily you don't necessarily have to build a whole team around her. You may have these units already built or, you know, needed that extra push just to, uh, to level Death Pierce or another unit that you had that you, you, you didn't have leveled. Um, but yeah, she she has the same uh, ultimate as the Green Jericho, um, so you could use Gilia as a link for that and kind of push the damage a little bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, it, she definitely is another unit that most people probably will set as their main character to run around for a little bit. Um, she's she's uh, you know definitely one of the units that I, I hope to get uh, on my few pulls that I'm definitely going to try and kind of kind of test out the waters and see what my luck is and, and how far I want to uh, push. Um, because as like Sandy's saying, I'm I'm also saving for the one just like everyone in the community. Uh, but yeah, she's a fun unit and you could pair her up with even Green Gauther, just a favorite for all. <laughs> yeah, I thought her her pass for unique was a little bit of a strange design given her kit because you know if, if you happen to crit with her freeze ability like if it's a level two or level three you, you won't get the debuff because the frozen units can't get debuffed so uh, that's a very strange I, th I think decision on netmarble's part not to mention that her crit chance is actually fairly low too so she's not like she's critting all the time so you have to enable her critting either by giving her you know, crit chance in some form, be it through Green Goth or your Eastons of the world, or maybe even some crit chance rolls too. Um, so I always thought that was kind of like a weird design choice on their part. But hey, who knows? I guess we'll see a few Red Jerichos maybe rolling around, but maybe not because everyone's skipping it for the one. So the next character we're going to talk about is the the Fat Man himself, Red Fat King, and <laughs> Red Fat King was released if you're looking at a time period of what we've been getting on global compared to jp he should have been released like months ago um and he wasn't meta then he wouldn't have been meta then and he's he's not meta now he's he's basically one of those units that who knows maybe he'll find like a niche role in a final boss that hasn't been released yet but likely not um, so just going over his kit, his passive removes debuffs from himself at the start of every turn. That sounds pretty cool, right? Well, just wait until you the rest of his kit. It's not really that exciting. His first ability is an AoE attack card, and it fills his alt gauge on silver and gold versions of it. So it's very similar to Blue Easton's uh, silver and gold AoE cards. And then his second ability is an attack-based heal. Um, so it gives a small heal based on his attack, and then it gives like a three turn rejuvenate, which heal over time is just weak in general. Like if you need healing, you generally need it now. You don't need it tomorrow. So it's a it's a weak healer uh, as well as a weak damage dealer. His ultimate move it's single target 
and it does damage and it decreases the defense related stats by 40% for two turns, which is a great debuff. We just kind of talk about a similar one for Jericho. Um, but again, I think it's like a little, it's not great. Like if you had a, a, a debuff like that, maybe on one of your regular abilities, maybe you'd have a little bit more viability there as a support unit. But from, from an alt, I'm not sure if that's exactly what the kind of thing you want to see. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we're going to talk about in Red Fat King because really you should just forget that he exists after you get the free one. Just toss him your box, maybe give him a little CC to fill your box CC and then just move on to the next one. The next one, is, do you guys want to say anything about Red Fat King or have I covered all the, the boring bases on the poor guy? Yeah, you have you covered it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I've already given him like way too much airtime. Next on the list, though, is someone who's much more interesting. That's Green Halloween Roxy. So Roxy's actually like a good unit. Um, it's she's well. Let's go over a kit first. So her passive increases attack related stats by fifteen percent for each human ally she has. So it, it affects her own stats, not the teammate stats. Um, and also, for, it says for each human ally, that doesn't include herself because she is a human too. So presumably, if you're in a 3v3 format, you're going to get 30% attack buff, which gives her a pretty high attack. She does hit pretty hard because of it. Um, but that being said, if you don't use a full human team or if you start, dro- if you start dropping, she gets weak very quickly. She does definitely rely on that. And because of this too... Um, one of the downsides of any unit where you've got this kind of character restriction, you can't use certain units with her. You know, you can't use your Lost Femaliosis, your your Green Gothers, your Gothers at all even, right? Which is such a strong unit in PvP. But you can use the one Escanor because that beefy dude may not look like a human, but he is. So he's one that you can use in on comps with Roxy and there's probably some others in there that might be favorable, but you're, you're definitely restricting your, your unit pool because a lot of the stronger units these days aren't human. Her first ability is a Lost Vein Meliodas style AOE charge ability. So it ignores uh, defense and it hits pretty hard. So you get their AOE cleave. You've also got um, her second ability is a single target attack card and it's got stance cancel on silver and gold which it hits hard on its own as a single target ability especially given her like attack modifier with with her passive buff but you can also use the stance cancel for there's a couple meta units that have stances there's your tarmiels but also esterosas if you happen to see any of them and there's some some teams run both. There's that tanky team with Esteros and Tarmiel that you see every once in a while too. So this is a good unit to have there. Not to mention, she's also got type advantage over the blue units like Escanor or Tarmiel and type neutral Esterosa. So her typing is actually very beneficial to her being green. Her ultimate move is a single target attack. Hits pretty hard, but then it also fills two alt gauge orbs after you use it too. So after you get it for the first time, you get second, third time, fourth time pretty quickly again. So it's a, it's a nice little bonus effect there, and it hits pretty hard on itself. So um, some other things to know about her. She's actually got decent crit resistance, which is good. Um, she does the stance removal, which I mentioned, versus Tarmiel and Esterosa. Pairs well with the one. I kind of went over all this stuff before. Um, so counters for her. This is you know, who you want to look at to counter uh, green Roxy. Generally, red units will counter. Luckily for her, we're kind of getting towards that blue meta with with the one Ascanor. But LVM and Sario are going to hit her pretty hard. Uh, being a green unit, any sort of red high damage dealing units are really going to really going to hurt her. Um, but nice thing, to, like I said before, she actually has a high crit resistance. So getting critted by Sario and El- Las Familiotis isn't the, a guaranteed thing in most cases. The other way to counter her too is you can just ignore her and kill her squishy human teammates because if you do that, she's going to lose a lot of her ability to hit hard. And she hits hard, but only if she has those two human allies sitting there with her. Yeah, and that's about it for Roxy. You guys interested in Roxy? I personally think she's the most interesting character on this banner. What do you guys think? Sandy, what do you think about Roxy? Yeah, definitely. I know uh, the red Roxy is... uh super useful in, in Guild Wars in some way, you know? Um, so I definitely, I think I'll be pulling for her. I, I think her passive in itself, I do, again, I'm pulling for the one. 
And I think I'll put her, maybe test out uh, Red Shin, <laughs> since he's human too. Uh, same banner, maybe, uh, you know, two Perfect birds with segue. one stone. <laughs> yeah. Perfect segue. Well, well, who's the next character on the banner, Sandy? You want to tell us about him? Yeah, so uh, Red Shin. Um, you guys think he's going to be the new Crit King? Shin for the win, my man. Uh, great thing about him is that his association is uh, Red Meliodas or BDM, giving him uh, the extra 280 attack there. Um, this is what makes him really unique to me is his passive. Um, attacking an enemy with a debuff will result in a crit guaranteed. So uh, I, I think that since it is guaranteed that you'll crit, to get the most of this advantage, uh, I assume that we'll be eating crit damage food with him. Um, in my opinion, he kind of falls short of that top tier, you know, um, not like the one Escanor. Um, not a necessary pull since he does depend on other people for the deep buffs, but it would be super fun to take him to PvP. And I'm planning to do some PvP content for my channel on YouTube. Um, and thinking, thinking of different teams that I can put him on, I mean, we can pair him with Festival Blue Kings, Blue Wings King. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> Demon Hendrickson. Um, or you can play it the safe route where you want to pair him with guaranteed debuffs, such as like Red Lilia or, or Keo. Um, or most commandment teams um, would be fun, like Zeldris or Melascula or Monspeak for the Ignites. Um, curious to see what damage he can deal with that with crit damage food again. And um, looking at his cards, I, I think not a lot of people are going to be expecting his rank two, uh, the AOE card that limits the opponent's skill uses to only rank one uh, cards. Uh, so, uh, you know, GG, good game, <laughs> Green Gelther, <laughs> you know, any Gelther. <laughs> and you guys can just take that pass. Um, but yeah, I, I think. Definitely, I'm going to take him out for a spin. Um, so used to trying to crit with this uh, guild boss. Um, I've got the, you know, <laughs> the equipment for it, so I might just slap some on him and see what he'll do. So we know Sandy's going to be pulling a little bit. No Nova, do you want to say anything about Shin here first before we keep moving on? Yeah, you know, it, what came to mind at that last part is that, you know, you accidentally rank up Las Vegas cards, you know? <laughs> It actually might be kind of fun just to kind of throw people off with his uh, his Jack o' Lantern uh, rank two card. Let's see what how they would react to that. Yeah, that's awesome because there's nothing worse than seeing those gold Lost Vein cards. You can always tell you're like, oh, you see the silvers pop to gold. You're like, I'm screwed next turn unless I can deal with that. And now you got that way to deal with it while you're ranking them up at the same time. <laughs> so. What do you think, guys? Are we pulling? Sandy, it sounds like you might be pulling a little bit. Nova, I think you kind of tease it. You might be pulling a little bit too. What are, you, what are you guys' thoughts here? I'm definitely going to try a few times. Um, of the four, uh, even though I covered uh, Red Jericho, uh, I'm actually hoping to get Roxy. I, I, I think she's, a, again, a fun unit. You know, uh, like Sandy said, the current Roxy, uh, which I believe is a red unit, um, is, is pretty useful in the Guild Wars. So again, you know, all that's new contents coming down the road that uh, this Halloween Roxy, because uh, the allies that are human, you know, um, I'm not sure if it's limited to on the field or not, but I mean, hey, if, if three other humans are on the field with her and she gets 15% per, per sounds, sounds, sounds like fun. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I, I'm I'm really excited. I'm I'm not gonna pull myself on it because I am waiting for the one. That's kind of my take on this. And in terms of like advising people to pull, I think generally this is this is kind of a skippable banner. Would you would you guys agree on that? Like I don't think these are these aren't like must pull characters. They could be fun, but again, like anytime you decide to take that new character into PvP you're also going to have to invest a lot in them too, right? Because presumably, unless you already have stuff, your shins, your roxies of the world, um, it's a lot of costume investment, a lot of a lot of gems you're going to be sinking into, a lot of cosmetic upgrades, I guess, super awakening coins. So it's a, it's a really big decision. And considering that we do have the one Esquinor around the corner, unless you, you're you're deciding to whale on everything, maybe this might be the the a good a safe skip banner for for most people. Uh, and myself included. You think it's a safe safe bet, Sandy? 
safe bet. But I'm, I'm going to try for Roxy because I think once I get the one, I'm fairly confident I will get him. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're going to be so focused on trying to kill him that she's just going to be that damage dealer for me. <laughs> if Esquinor doesn't one-shot everybody, then she won't have her spotlight. You know, uh, Daz, uh, how you said earlier that you want the one, but you're not sure why. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, Roxy is one of those units that, uh, at least for me, is just that I, I want to use her. I'm just going to put her put her in my box, the CC box, and kind of just one day, I'm hoping to, to kind of utilize her. Uh, but it sounds like Sandy's going full throttle on it. But I mean, I still, personally, I still have Green Droll that, I mean, is a great unit and I haven't really had a time to kind of build him. So, you know, Roxy's going to be waiting in line with a, with an array of other units that I probably should uh, take care of first. But yeah, like you said, uh, I, I um, personally, I'm just going to throw a couple pulls at it, but it's definitely a skippable banner. It's not necessary. Does poor Roxy know your plan for it? You're going to hide her in a box on a shelf? Jeez. <laughs> it's not a way to start a loving, loving relationship, I don't think, <laughs> Novich. Uh, so, uh, no, would you want to tell us about the next item on the list, the Charge Hawk event, which we've seen before? Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of you that's probably been playing the game for a while uh, remember this event a while back. Uh, you get to fight a giant uh, hawk, um, the mascot of the Boar Tavern, of course. Um, and in this event, you know, uh, depending on how many times you clear it, you need to clear it 11 times to get the uh, red uh, uh, red fat king. And you get some, you get two super awakening tokens and, you know, an SSR pendant and uh, two chests along with some other exchange items from the shop um, for the people that are getting Shin and Roxy. There's some kind of cosmetics in there for them. Um, some hammers, which is always nice, some anvils. So all this stuff is always good. And, you know, the event itself is kind of fun. It's a little different. You know, he has tons of, of HP. And, uh, you know, I, I think I remember way back, you know, the units that were available to us, we were, everyone was running like Merlin with like Green Liz, and you're running with like two damage dealers, probably one of them, of course, being Red Escanor, um, probably Green Jericho at the time. Um, and uh, your goal was just to, to rush your ult um, and take him out. He has like uh, two stages or two hearts, however you want to put it. And uh, it definitely kind of fun to see how much damage you could you could do because there's a certain, I think, a certain debuff or something happens um, that he takes extra damage. Um, which they, they didn't release the information um, on the notes today of of the details of like his skills or whatnot or when you when you get in there but yeah just when you if you're doing the event just click on the magnifying glass to kind of read about Hawk's abilities and you'll find uh, what he's weak to and uh, it's it's definitely a fun uh, a fun event because you'd be doing some giant uh, numbers of damage uh, so I don't recall if Dereri, uh was out. Uh, during this last event, but I'm sure people could probably get some pretty high scores with her. And the fat king on the end of the stick there, right? You, you just got to chase <laughs> that fat king. That's, that's what everyone's doing it for. So next next segment, I feel like there's no one else that can talk about this here with more authority than Sandy, the, the guild boss queen. So Akumu is coming back after the next reset unless there's a bug which we've seen before where he gets released midweek by accident but presumably next week after the guild reset on sunday we'll be getting akumu you want to tell us about akumu sandy some strats for him it's been so long akuhu <laughs> that comes to my mind. Um, i definitely will be uploading different strats on my youtube for that um so keep an eye out um i am on youtube it's just sandy with a double y uh, 7DS um, for more detailed guides, but I, I like Akumo the best because his point system is very different than Einek and Kellak. Um, he's more balanced where you can do decent damage and net a good score without depending solely on HP boosts. Um, but again, HP does play a huge role, so those HP sets will definitely help. Um, there's three tiers, right? Uh, the easy team suggestion for those who are just beginners, um, you can do peers, which is BDM, Lil Lilia, Rugal, Marmus um, for the HP. You can also go like Mono Red with Lost Vein, Arthur, Twee God, of course, and Hauser. Um, and then the advanced team suggestion, which I think um, 
<laughs> before the next the, the more advanced one with Durari is that the Keo and Lost Vein. So you can clear that out pretty quick um, and get a really decent score. But the insane try hard. Um, so for the Sandies and the uh, Chik Chiksuas <laughs> and Kanas, uh, the top players, we're going to be aiming for that elite Durari Easton, um, building, you know, that four piece defense set and just taking those alts. Um, and taking that damage <laughs> from Akumu and try try as hard as we can to get that high score. Um, I think, uh, what, six, six, seven thousand on extreme would be the goal? <laughs> it seems nuts to me. Like, I've, I've seen some chatter and a couple of videos, uh, JP related videos, on people trying that Alate Derriere Easton strategy. And, it, and the requirements for it are, are fairly nuts. Um, it, it's just like anything else. You end up with that big derriere hit. But the problem is once you, you kill off the sidearms of Akumu, it goes into like invincibility beast mode where it drains alts and everything. So this strategy, like you've got to have triple UR defense set on derriere. Like who has that? Well, I mean, some people are going to have it after next week, I guess. But like you got to patience, like the extreme boss and Alate's Alt helps with that because she boosts everyone's defense-related stats, including resistance and everything. But yeah, it's gonna get so high your patience in the boss, and like we're talking very high um, alt level on a latte to get that defense up high enough. But also, like for the strategy to work, you need a high alt level on Easton, Blue Easton as well. And I don't think many people have the the requirements for this. So not only do you need the time and the patience to deal with the RNG, but you also have to have the characters and the pieces in place to, to be able to do this. Uh, when Sandy says it's the try our strategy, it's like the try impossible strategy. Like it's only for like the select few. Um, definitely refer to the other strategies and, and videos that Sandy's going to be definitely putting out um, with regards to like the easier ones. Please don't start making those triple defense sets for Terrieri anytime soon because you might be a little disappointed in your results. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're going to have to uh, re-roll resistance, um, start cooking that resistance food already because um, you're going to need a lot of those to try this these runs. Um, but definitely, you know, uh, with my YouTube channel, I try to do something where uh, other players who don't have these characters, um, like Daz said, you know, if you don't have them high alt or if you don't even have them at all, there are other strategies that you can do um, that will net a good score as well. All right. So next on the list and the final like patch note, like little, almost a little footnote, but still important to note is that green and blue Jericho, some very old units, um, are getting a buff. Uh, they're not going to be nearly as squishy anymore. Turns out they're giving, well, let's talk about, I'll just talk about Green Jericho because she's probably the one that most people will be using. Well, they're giving her attack a boost of a couple hundred po a couple hundred attack points, her defense a boost by a couple hundred uh, defense points, and her HP a boost by about 4,000 HP. Not to mention she's getting some substat changes too. Increased a pierce, increased a crit chance, which is great. If you're still using Jericho to try and crit on the guild bosses, it's going to make it a little bit easier too. Her resistance is going from zero to 40, so she'll be taking a lot less damage from a lot of the PvE bosses that you're going to be taking. You typically have fairly high pierce numbers. Her crit resistance is going up, crit defense. Her CC is going up too. She's going to be not the highest in the game or anything, but she's going to have a respectable CC if you've got her fully tricked out as well. So she's going to be a unit that suddenly can be used um, more effectively, say, in situations where you require higher CC. So that's a nice little surprise, a nice little footnote. But speaking of surprises, we're going to try a new little segment here, just a little fun one to break it up a little bit. Um, if you've ever heard of the game, Would You Rather? And, you know, if you're a 10 year old boy, you may have heard of this. Um, but, you know, maybe if you're my age, the, un the undisclosed age of, of, of Daz here, um, you had to talk to your kids to ask them what this game was about. And they said, you know what, this is one that you should be running uh, on your podcast. So I was like, sure, I'll give, it a, I'll give it a go. So the way Would You Rather works is I'm going to be asking Sandy Inovich some questions. And it's, it's an A or B like option, right? It's a multiple choice thing. And we're going to. Hopefully there'll be some interesting responses coming out of this and a little bit of discussion afterwards. So just a full disclaimer, Sandy and Novich have not seen these questions. So I'm going to go through with the first ever Borhat Tavern, Would You Rather? So ready for the first question, Novich and Sandy, you guys ready? 
Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. So <laughs> first question, I'm going to, I'm going to start with Sandy and I'll go to Novich for this one. If you worked for Netmarble, would you rather be a community manager, CM gold or B host of the Borja headlines ordinary? our very famous mustache friend. Sandy, would you rather be CM Gold or Ordinary? I would enjoy being CM Gold. Really? Why is that? You don't, you're not a big fan of mustaches? Be, be careful with your response here because both the people on your show have, well, I mean, we've got beards, but we also got mustaches which meld into our beard. So be careful about your response. Uh, well, I think CM Gold, the way that he just posts, I mean, with the uh, notes today, he could have just put it all into one, <laughs> but he likes to break it up. Um, I, I like the interaction with the community. Um, so I'll, I think I'll have a lot more fun interacting with the C 70s, uh, you know, patrons through being CM Gold. Um, and I, I enjoy that a lot more. Nothing against mustaches. You know? <laughs> You'd make a much better CM Gold than the existing CM Gold. No offense, CM Gold, I don't know you. But I still think Sandy would do an amazing job as community manager. How about you, Novich? What would you rather be? Community manager, you know, CM Gold, or ordinary? <laughs> I actually would be, uh, um, I'd go for ordinary because uh, I feel like he doesn't take as much heat for things that happen. <laughs> um, I, I hate to be in the, Hotspot. Sometimes I, I see how the community people post asking CM Gold some direct questions and they want answers, um, but I never really see people actually. Um, they may they may comment about ordinary, but I don't think they really kind of put the pressure on him. He seems kind of like just this the guy that's just delivering the news, and you know, you can't be better. No. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to shoot the messenger, I guess. Right? You'll you'd make a much much better ordinary. So Netmarble, if you're hiring. For those two positions, we've got two candidates right here, and they would rather be them than the other, if that makes sense. Okay, question number two. I'll start with Novich. Would you rather eat food prepared by Meliodas or get sat on by Droll? It's tough when you go first, eh? You don't get time to think yeah, about it. Yeah, Sandy's already had uh, some. She's got, she's got some time. Uh, so what do you think? Would you rather eat food prepared by Meliodas, which is notoriously horrible, or get sat on? by the giant king himself droll you know i know escanor went for it so I, I, i'll follow his lead too you know some rainbow uh explosion <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> want to occur but I, I, i'll eat the food prepared by miliotis Ooh. rather than being sat on by troll might be the safe answer how about you sandy i love food um, so I'm not going to deny a free meal. Uh, I, I would, <laughs> I would eat Meliodas's food. You know, those are probably safe answers considering you'd probably get crushed if you got sat on by droll, at least to the Meliodas thing, you know, the vomiting will pass in time, right? Okay. Next one. I'll go to Sandy first. Who would you rather have as a parent? Molascula or Galland? I can't imagine they're they're very maternal or paternal people, but which one would you rather have as a parent, Melascula or Gallon, Sandy? I've been a hardcore Gallon fan um, since I've joined 7DS. I think I joined during the uh, slime event, um, and Gallon was one of the first characters that I pulled. Um, and he's just he's such a fun unit, and the way that he just he's intimidating, you know that manipulation. Um, I really think I would want him for a parent, whereas Melascula, I feel like she'll just suck the life out of me by all her <laughs> nagging. <laughs> so, so if Gallon was your dad, I guess the boyfriend's coming home would be a little scared, eh, when you were in, back in high school. <laughs> you seeing that guy with the big axe? Mm, maybe not so much. He'd be great. He'd be great to like teach you sports and stuff too, though. Like, if you want to play baseball with someone, I feel like Gallon's got a mean, a mean bat. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about you, Novich? I'm actually gonna go uh, the opposite of Sandy because um, growing up, I could only imagine not being able to lie to Gallon. <laughs> 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 so uh, I think the easy way out uh, would be Melascula, but at the same time, like Sandy said, a pretty scary person to have as your mom. <laughs> um, but at least you'll be able to get away with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, now we've got a little peek into Novich's childhood. <laughs> Not the most <laughs> honest of kids, apparently. Okay, so next up, would you ra- who would you rather have as your high school math teacher? Derriere or Zeldris? Novich, to you first. Who would you rather have as a teacher? I just put math in there to give it a bit more detail, but Derriere or Zeldris? You know, uh, I would probably say Derriere. Um, you know, uh, because, I mean, her, her school uniform looks so good, so I'm hoping <laughs> that, you know, that's the uniform for them. Probably be a little distracting for the boys if she was wearing that up at the front of the class. But how about you, Sandy? What do you think? Derriere is Zeldris. Who do you want to be at the front of your classroom? I'm going to have to go with the commandment of Petty. Um, I'm just hoping that he'll let my math problems slide because I am not the best at math at all. <laughs> well, if you ever get sent to the principal's office, Gallon's going to be coming with you. So you've got that to, to back up on. Then I can't lie. Math doesn't lie, right? (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Final question. Go to Sandy first. Who would you rather have as a drinking buddy? Meliodas or Bon? Bon. Bon, hands down. Quick answer. Yeah, hands down. He's always at the bar. And Um, he's always shirtless, too. We've already made a note of Sandy's affinity for shirtless men. And he'll cook for you after you're drunk. That's true. We've already established we do not want Melios to be cooking for us after a long night of drinking. How about you, Novich? Bon, definitely Bon. Uh, <laughs> just like Sandy said, I think it'd be be fun uh, to have that experience. And, you know, his food is way better than Meliodas's. <laughs> Fair enough. And that wraps up our Would You Rather segment. Sandy, Novich, thank you for being the guinea pigs for that one. I just think I read the questions. I don't have to think about the answers on the spot. So final segment for today's show, Camilla free to play teams. We're all, we all have Camilla, at least presumably so considering she's free on the recent event. I guess if you're a newer player, you can make use of her, Sandy. Is that right? Definitely. You can make use of her and it's, it's easy to clear if you go into it um, with the strategy or else she's just going to one shot your team. Um, uh, on my videos, you know, I, I love Pierce teams. Um, I wanted to kind of bring that back with BDM. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you go in there picking your high damage dealer. So anybody with um, high alts, um, single target, high attack characters. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to want to rush their alts um, while their skills, you're damaging Camilla down to ensure that you're just going to kill her. So those characters, meaning like Green Escanor, Red Escanor, Dureri, Blue Slater, um, anyone who doesn't have like an AOE alt, um, bring them in with BDM. Um, I really think that Halloween Roxy will, will seriously just yeet Camilla if you pair her with all humans. Again, like Escanor, Blue Arthur, um, I think even Levi or Mikasa. So I might try that out. Um, if I do get Roxy, since I've been telling you guys, I will pull for her. (laughs) And so just general reminders for you guys that attacking her five times will give her the attack buffs. Plus she's going to get her alt and she's, she's just going to shaft your team. So only attack five times if you and your partner are sure that you're going to kill, um, or move your cards to build those alts. So what I mean by that is say your random teammate hits her three times already. Um, That means that you can only hit her two times and on your last card or your last turn, you're gonna move a card or throw away any card that does not deal damage. So that's why I kind of like Blue Demon Meliodas because his Corrosion card, you can make room um, for an alt draw card uh, without doing damage to her where you're gonna give her that attack advantage. Um, you can beat her again. So go in there with your high damage dealers with high attack defense gear and make sure that you and your partner really have a strat, um, so that you just don't get frustrated. <laughs> I gotta say the old, I, I, I really didn't read the, the show notes here just backing up. But I kept, I kept like panning this as like the character Camilla, you're talking about the boss Camilla, right? <laughs> Oh, I'm talking about the boss. Yeah. The whole time. (laughs) It's funny how like, I was like so meticulous about going through all the notes and everything. Then at the end, like, Hey, we're like, we're going to talk about, you know, using Camilla and like free to play PVP teams. Nope. 
nope, that's not not at all. And I apologize if I gave anyone that impression because that's apparent. That's not what Sandy wanted to talk about. She's talking about clearing Camilla, the boss. Because I was like, oh, is that how Camilla works? And it took me like a solid three minutes to clue in there to the fact that I was totally wrong off the top. But anyways, Sandy, sorry for interrupting. You can continue now <laughs> with your excellent advice on on taking down Camilla, the boss. Well, I, I think that's it, but I definitely, maybe we're going to add that to next week's segment. <laughs> sure. Here, I had like really great intros and stuff for the segment too. Like, yo, like everyone's got a free one. No, and you're, you guys are probably like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Anyhow, live and live and learn funny moment. We can all laugh about later. Um, but I, th- I think this is probably, I guess, you know, on this, that note, hopefully no one's watching this far into the show, so they won't see that gaff on my part. But if you are, thank you so much for sticking around for about an hour, which is nuts if you're listening to us for an hour and you're still entertained. We, we appreciate it thoroughly. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today at the Borhat Tavern, Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross Podcast. We stream our show live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Borhat Tavern every week on Monday nights at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. That's right about 30 minutes after the traditional maintenance time. So we know you're not going to be watching or uh, playing the game, so you might as well be watching us, right? So, Sandy, if pe- we keep mentioning your YouTube videos throughout this, where can people find these videos? Where can they find Sandy's YouTube channel? Yes, yeah, so I just I just got a logo made. Um, so if you just type in Sandy, S-A-N-D-Y, 7-D-S, um, you should be able to uh, find me. I got that uh background of the guild boss <laughs> i have pink hair so i'm thinking once i get to a thousand subscribers i might try that out um so please come and check out my videos and hopefully it helps all three of us are members of the global guild denied it's part of the scoundrels alliance if you'd like to come in and hang out with us or maybe even if you want to join our ranks poke your head in our discord the link's going to be in the description i'm not going to read it out because these discord links do not read very well if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us anytime at podcast at borehattavern.com or you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at, at Borhat Tavern. I can't believe those were available, but we got them. You can also subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, which if you're, do, if, you're, if you're looking on Google Podcasts, it just got approved today, so it might take a couple days for it to actually show up in search. Stitcher or wherever you happen to find your podcast online. You can also find our shows on our website at borehattavern.com dot com which don't go there it's horrible but i mean if you really need to watch the show and you got nowhere else to go go there but still it's horrible we're gonna fix it it'll get much better but right now it's it's you know i was gonna say borderline embarrassing but it's just all full out embarrassing borehattavern.com just forget i said that one we'd also like to thank streetwise rhapsody from youtube for composing our awesome cover of the grand cross theme song that we use for our intro and andre bobe from art station for letting us use his outstanding 3d renders of the Borhat tavern for our pre-live and post video splash screens you see the pre-live one on twitch you'll see the post one in a second on youtube as well you can find all of their work on the websites that we have in the description as well i definitely suggest you check those out everybody thanks for listening novich and sandy thanks as always everybody have a great week <laughs>